Congratulations, you've got the job interview for that entry-level GRC analyst job, and now you're nervous about the interview questions. Are you gonna freeze up? Are you gonna know the answers? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you the seven most common GRC analyst interview questions that you can face. I'm gonna explain why you're gonna hear them, and the best part, I'm gonna give you the answers that you can use to crush that job interview. Now, this isn't just regurgitating the responses, but it'll give you the insights to understand what you should be thinking about, where you should be looking, and if you have any gaps, how you can close those as well. So, whether you're transitioning into cybersecurity or you're looking to specialize in GRC, these questions are gonna come up in every interview, I've seen these patterns, I've done interviews, I have 20 years of experience, I've hired plenty of GRC analysts in my day. I know that these questions are legit, let's dive in. First question, what is GRC, why is it important, okay? Why am I asking this? That you're, it's an entry level role job. I wanna test your foundational understanding and just understand if you even know what the job is that you're gonna be doing. A lot of people don't know what GRC is or what it stands for. What I would suggest you do is answer it basically by breaking down the acronym and then explaining each piece of it. So GRC stands for Governance, Risk, and Compliance. For governance, it's about establishing policies, procedures, oversight, making sure that the business is involved with the cybersecurity and that cybersecurity enables the business. Risk, the next one, involves identifying, assessing, and managing potential threats that could impact business objectives. And honestly, of the three, risk is the one that is the most valuable from a delivery perspective of the analyst. C is compliance, and this just makes sure that your company is meeting regulatory requirements or industry standards or internal policies, right? You're compliant with whatever that external edict is. GRC is critical because it helps organizations make informed decisions, protect against threats, maintain customer trust, and avoid costly regulatory penalties. It's essentially the framework that keeps businesses running securely and legally. And what I like to say all the time, and please steal this if you want, is that we don't have infinite money. You can even say this to the interviewer. Listen, I know the business doesn't have infinite money. I know we don't have infinite time. I know we don't have infinite people. So where do we choose how to spend our time, how to spend our money? What controls do we put in? We wanna pick the ones that have the biggest cyber risk reduction for our business, that's what GRC does. Make sure that you're always connecting GRC to business value. It's not about checking boxes or compliance, right? It's about enabling the business to operate safely. Question number two, how would you conduct a risk assessment? Now, this is gonna test your practical understanding of a core GRC process, and it's the one I just told you has the biggest value, right? Risk, understanding risk, assessing risk, right? What I recommend you do is follow a structured approach, okay? You could start with asset identification, right? What we're protecting here, what data, what systems, what application, what technology, what locations, whatever. Next is the threat identification. What could go wrong, right? Is it cyber threat actors, natural disasters, human errors, insider threats? You know, an environmental factor like <laughs> the data center server rack is right below an air conditioner that's gonna leak on it right? Mostly you want to focus on cyber threat actors like criminals in nation states because that's like 80%, 85% of like what we're really protecting from. But don't sleep on the natural disasters and the environmental ones. Once you've got like the assets you're protecting and the threats to them, you want to look and do like a vulnerability assessment, right? What, what are the weaknesses that the threats could exploit? Then if they do exploit it, what is the impact, right? Determine what the consequences of that impact would be if it happened. And what's the probability of it, right? The likelihood. Risk at the end of the day is the likelihood. How likely is something bad to happen? And if it does happen, what is the impact? Likelihood and impact, right? So if it's very likely to happen and it's gonna be catastrophic, that's really high risk. That's wicked bad, right? If it's incredibly unlikely to happen, but it's still really catastrophic, it's way less of a concern because we're talking about like a black swan type one-off event, right? It obviously would be really bad, but then your risk calculation, which is just that likelihood and impact, you can do it in a qualitative way, like, oh, this is a high risk, a medium risk, whatever. And then deciding what you're gonna do with that risk, right? That's the final step of that uh, risk assessment process. So again, going back, you've got this really very likely high impact issue 
you're gonna want to mitigate that down, right? We're not gonna accept it. And with risk, you can accept it, meaning let it go, just it's cool. Like, like the one I just said, the black swan event, very low likelihood, high impact. You might just accept that as like, listen, that's a one in a thousand years type situation. We're not gonna pay money to mitigate that risk down because it's too expensive. And we'll just take our chances. We'll accept that risk. Mitigating risk down is actually investing time, money, resources, or whatever to bring it down to an acceptable level. Your four choices, by the way, on risk are accept, mitigate, transfer, or avoid. Transfer is like insurance and avoid is just like you don't do it, whatever it is, right? So like, <laughs> like this is a stupid example, but it'll make the point. Let's say that you have this like big risk of your, your staff getting fished, right? Like a phishing email comes in and your staff fall for it. Well, one way to avoid that risk is just to get rid of email altogether, right? Then nobody can get fished because there's no email. It's a stupid example because email is mission critical, so you're not gonna get rid of it. So now you have to mitigate the risk down, right? The key with all of this though is to be systematic and ensure that all stakeholders understand both the risks and the business contact. And if you want for bonus points, uh, mention the NIST special publication 800-30, which is the guide to conducting risk assessments. If you're really brave, read it itself and it'll give you value on how to do this. But you basically wanna just explain the process of risk assessment. Don't, you can give examples and such, but that's, that's basically the deal. What are we protecting? What are the risks? How could the threats exploit the things that we're trying to protect? What's the likelihood? What's the impact? And then based on that risk score of likelihood and impact, what is, what are you gonna do about it, okay? Question number three, what's the difference between a policy, a procedure, and a standard? This is another great entry-level GRC analyst question. You're gonna be working with policies and procedures and standards. This is kind of like a sec plus type question, but basically all I'm trying to understand is if you understand what these terms mean, because you're gonna be working on them. What I will tell you is, it's, it's nice and clean to respond to this question, like a hierarchy, so policies, standards, procedures, right? So policies are high level statements and they define what we do and why. So think of policies as like rules, right? When you were growing up, maybe your parents said you had to be in bed by seven, that's a policy. And if you didn't go to bed by seven, you may have gotten grounded or in trouble, right? That's violating policy. Standards specify them you know, a, a value, right? That's what a standard is, it's a value. So the speed limit's 55 miles an hour. The standard is 55 for that. Your password has to be 12 characters long. That's a standard, okay? Procedures are step-by-step -step instructions on how to implement the standards to support the policy, right? So the procedure for your password configuration, it's, you know, go in here and make sure that the password minimum requirement is eight characters. Maybe you have a procedure around how to change your password, right? Things like that. Policies are the set direction, standards define the requirements, and procedures explain execution, okay? And like a, a kind of a pro tip, easy way to remember this is policies are like traffic laws, standards are like speed limits, and procedures are like directions on how to get from here to where you're going, right? Kind of all this uh, driving analogies. Question number four, how do you stay current in cybersecurity? Now, I tell people, all the time they're gonna get this question. And frankly, you'll get this question no matter what job you're interviewing for in cybersecurity, it's that important. Staying current in GRC particularly is crucial, which is why you're gonna be asked and you need to have a solid answer. Now, what I have heard many people say in the past that is a terrible answer is like, oh, you know, I, I read a couple blogs, I, I you know, some Twitter stuff, That that's fine, right? That is, appropriate. However, you really should be going deeper uh, with like what Twitter accounts or what blogs are you reading or like where are you getting the information specifically? Because if you're really staying current, I should be able to ask you what was the last thing you read? And I would assume it is something more recent, right? Some other options, you can subscribe to regulatory updates like from NIST or industry bodies. There's professional associations like ISACA or ISC2 that have newsletters that go out with information. 
Um, you can obviously do networking right within the cybersecurity community, uh, like LinkedIn groups or local chapter meetings and stuff like that. Also, and you know, this is my favorite answer for sure. Every single weekday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I literally do a live stream one hour threat briefing with five, 600 professionals in chat. And I go through the top cyber news stories of that day. And I do it Monday through Friday. Now, that is a perfectly good vehicle for you to get this information and have a killer answer in this job interview when you get this question. But I want you to know, like literally, I'm a practitioner. I need to stay current. So I do this 8 to 9 a.m. already for myself, but I just go live to share it with everybody else. When you do mention specific resources, I, I, I really challenge you to name the specific resources because somebody in the interview may consume from the same thing, right? So you might say, oh, I go to Jerry's Daily Cyber Threat Brief. Oh, no kidding, so do I. Like, awesome, boom, and now you got something in common. Question five, describe a time that you identified and addressed some type of gap or vulnerability, right? Now, this is gonna test practical experience in your problem solve and approach. Now, it, the STAR method is a well-known framework for answering. And if you get into a pickle or anything, you can use the STAR method to kind of structure your response. And the STAR method is situation, task, action, result. Now, let me break it down for you. So situation, you could say something like, during an audit of my organization, you know, I, I was reviewing data retention policies. The task was I needed to ensure that we were compliant with our GDPR and industry requirements or whatever. The action was that I discovered that we were retaining customer data longer than GDPR's maximum uh, allowance, right? So I immediately documented the gap, assessed the scope. How big was it? It's like 15% of records were beyond that maximum length. Uh, I looked at how much the penalties would be for having this data and I worked with IT to automatically delete the, those files and make sure that future records that went beyond that uh, timeline were also deleted. And this resulted in eliminating this compliance risk and avoiding fines of up to $20,000, which overall helped our data governance process. It was great. So that's a perfect example of using the STAR method. Now, if you're a new professional, you break it in, you don't have an example that you can reach to really quickly. I, I'd recommend just for this exercise, right? Go do like an audit of your home wireless network, right? I know it sounds like a silly example. If you do it and walk through the process, hey, I was doing a routine audit of my home wireless network and you can look for like best practices, right? Like is the admin password secure? Is wireless encryption turned on? Is logging enabled? Like whatever, right? You could say you did an audit and discovered that there was no issues or that there was issues or whatever. And then what was your result of that? It's going to give you an actual practical example that you can point to instead of saying, oh, I, I read a book that said you could do this or I watched a video, right? Like it's your you're putting the practical skills into your own hand, which is what the interviewer is gonna really value. Question six, how would you explain a complex compliance requirement to a non-technical stakeholder? Now this matters because communication skills and business acumen are huge for the GRC people. We are literally the interface between cybersecurity and the business. So I recommend you use like a translate and relate kind of approach, right? Start with the business impact. If you can, always go to money if you can and keep it high level, not in the technical weeds. You could say something like, this regulation, this requirement, whatever, affects our revenue, our customers, our reputation. You're making it relevant to the business person. Make sure you use analogies if possible, right? You can compare these complex technical concepts to familiar business processes. You can also focus on the outcome. What happens if we comply versus don't comply? A lot of business people don't care about the, the how or whatever. They, they care about like, what does this actually mean to me? Think for a second, you go to a medical doctor, right? And they're like, oh, we've checked your uh, x-rays and we found you have a, you know, a flim flam dip thing, dong shang bop, 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 right? And then you're like, okay, what the hell, like, what does that actually mean to me? Like, what does that mean? Am I sick? Do I need medicine? Do I need to check into a hospital? Like, what does it mean to me? That's the same thing that the business person is, right? Like the medical dog, I don't care about all those medical terms. I just want to know, am I in danger, right? Provide real scenarios that they can relate to if possible, right? 
and then give clear next steps and responsibilities, right? You're there as an advisor. It, it, you're explaining encryption to a sales director, right? You can say, think of encryption like a safety deposit box, just as you need two keys to access value items in the bank. Our customers' data needs two keys to access it. That protects both our customers and our business reputation. And I would recommend that you have like two to three good analogies for common GRC concepts, right? Like around like the use of passwords or the use of multi-factor authentication and what that does for you. Also patching would be another good one. Question number seven, and this one's a bit of a curveball. What questions do you have for us? This is another one you are absolutely guaranteed to get at the end of the interview. This is gonna gauge and test whether you're genuinely interested and in how you think. So some questions you could ask are, what are the biggest GRC challenges the organization's currently facing? How does the GRC team measure success and contribute to business objectives? What tools and technologies does the team use for risk management? Can you talk to me about how the team is structured? What opportunities exist for professional development? Don't ask questions like salary, how many days off do I get? When can I you know, take a vacation? What's in it for me? Like, do I, are you guys pay for my cell phone? Like, don't ask those questions. HR can answer those questions for you, but don't do it in the interview. Like, you, you focus on what is the impact about how you can uh, deliver value to that organization and that you're showing interest in the long-term play of that organization. That's why these questions are all kind of like strategically focused. So there you have it. Those are seven common entry-level GRC analyst interview questions and exactly how to approach them. Remember, interviews are conversations, not interrogations. I know that they can feel wicked intimidating, especially if you're younger or you feel like imposter syndrome and you're out of your element, but be authentic, show your passion for cybersecurity, demonstrate how you think through problems. A lot of times it's not so much, do you have the right answer? It's how are you thinking? How are you seeing problems? I can teach you how to do any of the skill things. How you think isn't something I can teach you. It's something you are. And by answering the questions this way, like you're demonstrating how it's going. Now, if you found this helpful and you wanted to go even deeper into GRC and potentially help you get that entry level role, I'd recommend you check out my definitive GRC analyst masterclass at Simply Cyber Academy. I have literally over 10,000 students who have gone through the course and used it to launch their GRC careers. I am super proud of it. It's super practical. It's super hands on. There's actually labs in it. So check, check that out. There'll be a link in the comment below. Let me know in the comments, is there a question that you commonly ask or have been asked in interviews that I didn't cover? I'd love to see them. I'll even comment back in the comments myself on what my thoughts are on those questions. As always, keep pushing and stay secure.